All right, so basically what I've been doing is just getting those battery low, very low battery power, very low. Cabin, cabin overheat protection has been disabled. So you'll see that. Right now it's 26 degrees Fahrenheit, 1% um, battery power, very low. Cabin overheat protection disabled and the heating and AC has been reduced. But I'll be honest, it hasn't really been reduced. I can go in here. Um, with heating, you can see I can turn on all the heat seeders. You do all that. And my whole thought has been, how do I get this? What happens when the car turns off? Now, one thing I did is I opened earlier the charge port, um, but I am thinking this is about as far as I want to take it today. So here's my test. It is currently 9 p.m. I'm gonna find out how much with a 50 amp wall connector that I have installed on the wall, you'll see some of my other videos on that. Um, how long does it take me to go from 1% to full? I have moved the indicator all the way to full. I've set the limit all the way to full. So I should get 260, 258 some odd miles um, in, in terms of battery charge. If I do get more, it's because of my battery's gone through a reconditioning because of me having gone all the way down to 1%. So, all right, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching these. Like uh, the videos if you don't mind, if you can. If you want to subscribe, please do. I, I've been posting a bunch of videos about superchargers, and next week I'm going to be going uh, down to Springfield, Illinois. So I'll visit some superchargers on the way there. So the next morning, the, char the car fully charged. It took about eight hours. I don't have the exact time because I didn't get a notification, but it did take, it told me it was going to take about eight hours and 20 minutes. 96% is what it put me to. And from a distance perspective, that gives me 254 miles. So reconditioning, I think, did a little something for it. I, I'm not sure. I, I thought I put it at full. Um, it is cold. It's 35 degrees, so it's freezing out still. A little over freezing. Um... But I think that worked. So anyway, going down 1% was a fun fun little experiment. I'm not sure if I want to go further, but I, I will try that someday. You know, this is the next morning, and I, I had a couple more thoughts about what I did last night. So getting the car down to 1%, I'm telling you, that was 1%, and I think I had about 4 miles. And it causes a lot of anxiety. You, you start thinking, like, well, I'm just going around the block. I'm, I'm really not going far. But what if the car did break down, down the block? You know, it's not like I have a, you know, can I go up to my neighbor and just plug in, right? No. So, so the whole notion of when you get below 10%, you do get all these notifications. I posted, you see them earlier in this video. I did notice some other things, right? It, it gives you the warning that the, the heating and AC, I guess, gets restrained. I wasn't using AC. It's, it's winter here. So, but I was using heat. I didn't notice that the heat was being constrained at all. Um... I can definitely tell you the power in terms of driving was. So I, I, I was going out on, on some major roads and the ability to you know accelerate like a normal Tesla was greatly, greatly reduced. So, so that is for, without a doubt, that is ab absolutely impacted. Um, other than that, I think, you know, besides the notifications, it gives you more than enough notifications letting you know that your battery's getting low. Um, so that's a good thing. But yeah, the, the acceleration or just ability to uh, have some torque was, was definitely missing. So that was the big one.